Coming to you from Studio A at Scottsdale Community College, I'm Ashley Neville and it's time to go inside Maricopa Sports. On this edition of Inside Maricopa Sports, we look at some of the best stories from this past year. Phoenix College basketball star Brandon Brown beats the odds after his life took a wrong turn. Phoenix College softball coach Heinz Mueller tells us about his team's trip to nationals. We'll see how SEC volleyball players make the transition from playing to coaching. We also talk to Keith Brower about his rebound back to the classroom and the basketball court at SEC. But first, SEC baseball was a formidable force this past season. The Artichokes won the regional tournament and advanced to nationals. I talk with head coach Alex Turney about his team's journey. In a season filled with ups and downs, the Artichokes never stopped fighting. Despite losing their last two games of the regular season and finishing with a 29 and 25 record, they still clinched the fourth seed in the playoffs. They had a really good start to the year and uh, had a period of about 20 games where we really struggled. We were as bad as we could possibly be. Um, and had an event that sort of turned our year around for us and, and it was almost like the, the players remembered that they were pretty good. The four-seeded artichoke swept the top-seeded Paradise Valley Community College Pumas in the opening round of the playoffs, then faced Phoenix College. SEC lost the first game, but they didn't panic. They believed that they could win two games and they knew that you had to win two. You know, it wasn't the first team that won one, you had to win two. Coaches say the team's maturity allowed them to persevere and win the next two games against PC and capture the D2 Region 1 Championship. There's no feeling like it. Um, it is, uh, it, it's a wonderful thing to watch those kids celebrate an achievement like that. Um, I, I don't know that words could really do it justice. Catcher Will Fry was named the Region 1 D2 Playoff MVP. He made a huge impact in Game 2 when the Artichokes were in a must-win game against the Bears. He went four for five with three RBIs, a double, and a home run in SEC's 10-5 victory. Will was a vocal leader for us um, for two years and, and was a catcher. And, and if you're going to have a, a vocal leader at that spot, that's really a good thing. And Will worked as hard or harder than anybody else that we had. In game three, Fry continued to dominate and went three for four with four RBIs, a triple, and a home run in SEC's 10-4 win. The Artichokes then traveled to Oklahoma for the NJCAA D2 World Series, but the trip came to a quick end after SEC lost back-to-back -back games. We played well twice, um, but not well enough. And, you know, we wound up losing two games. It was still a great experience. You know, we played well, but just came up a little bit short. Coach Cherney says he will use this year's experience in the playoffs to capture a national title next season. And another success story comes out of Phoenix College. Basketball star Brandon Brown takes full advantage of his second chance at life. Brandon Brown is one of the most celebrated basketball players at Phoenix College. But it didn't start out that way. After a promising basketball career at Cesar Chavez High School, Brown's hopes and dreams as a basketball player were put on hold. I was hanging out with the wrong crowd, wrong people at the wrong time, and got into a little bit of trouble. He spent two and a half years in a corrections facility for his involvement with an armed robbery. But Brandon turned his life around and took control of life with the help and support of his high school coach and mentor, Gary Lee. Gary Lee is one of the best coaches I've ever had. He's like a dad on and off the court. It's the same person every time, no matter what. Uh, I love him. And he's just a great coach. Lee has remained a big part of Brown's life, even while Brown served his time. We talk about what was going on in his daily life and, and how he was handling it and talked about the future. You know, a lot of it was go to PC and, and start fresh and, and try to prove himself. Brown enrolled at Phoenix College in the spring of 2013 to pursue an education and play basketball. His success took off from there as he led the Bears to its first national title his freshman year. It meant the world. <laughs> Just coming from where I came from to winning a national championship and being the MVP of the tournament, nothing could touch me. <laughs> Just to see him have a second opportunity to uh, show his talents playing basketball, just to get his degree, 
uh, here at Phoenix College and move on. Uh, and for him to be just unbelievably successful doing it, it it's fun to watch. It's Gordon recruited Brandon in high school and saw his potential as a point guard. His work ethic his drive to be successful and he's the ultimate competitor. Brown never let his past define him. He used it as motivation to not only become a better basketball player, but to become a better student as well. It made me a way better student. I, get, I got good grades since I've been here. I take school a lot more serious. Brown believes his experience, both good and bad, has given him a reputation. I made a huge turnaround in my life. I did a lot of great things here at this school and I, I think I had a lot of success. Coach Lee says Brown's achievements are an inspiration to the kids at Cesar Chavez High School. We take our kids over to Phoenix College to watch him play. He'll come here for open gym and play with our kids and they, they really like watching him play. Brown shares some advice to those who look up to him. Stay focused on whatever it is that you're trying to do and go for it. Brown's mental toughness allows him to persevere and take full advantage of his second chance at life. Brown led the Bears to another national tournament this past season, where they placed third. Now he's leading the way at Loyola Marymount University, averaging 14 points and five assists per game. The PC softball team also completed another successful season. Phoenix has a history of earning nine NJCAA national titles. Last spring, they advanced to the D2 national tournament. Let's take a look at how they got there. The Phoenix College softball team owned yet another successful season. Known for its many achievements, including nine NJCAA national titles, PC finished the regular season ranking fourth in the final NJCAA poll and won the NJCAA Division II Region I tournament. Coach Heinz Mueller explains how his team battled through it. I think it has to do with the team's chemistry and their willpower, desire. The Lady Bears won 16 games coming from behind during the regular season. So their resiliency was a known characteristic. We wanted to win and we came together as a team and we know when to come together. Brittany Hopper was one of the main offensive threats at Nationals with two home runs and eight RBIs. She was named to the NJCAA Division II softball All-American team, earning first team honors. It just, hard work finally pays off. Like, it just was a really big accomplishment for me to see my hard work being put together and Getting that award meant a lot. PC pitcher Kennedy Garcia was also given first team All-American honors and gives most of the credit to her teammates. I have teammates right now that push me. I love working out with them because I know I can't do it by myself. I need someone there to push me, to just help me overall. Garcia finished the season 32 and seven, leading the nation in wins, complete games, and innings pitched while finishing third in starts fourth in saves and fifth in strikeouts. She says it's her relentless passion for the game and loyalty to her teammates that keeps her on point. I know I had a few losses and just those just got to me. Like I took them to heart. And just to see like how much I improved, how much I was able to do my part to help my team. So I knew they always had my back. I wanted to have theirs. The Bears fell short of a national title this year. But that didn't stop Garcia from resuming her daily routine. As soon as we got off that plane from Nationals, the next day she was out working out. And that's a dedication. You know, you, most, most players will take a couple of weeks off and relax, not her. She's determined now that she wants to win the Nationals, and she can. Garcia continues to lead by example and her work ethic motivates her teammates to push harder. I'm ready and, you know, I've probably never been more hungry in my life to you know, accomplish the goals I set out to, you know. I watched a lot of my really good teammates accomplish the goals that, you know, I was ready to accomplish. Sierra will take on a leadership role next season alongside Kennedy and Brittany. She knows that she has one more year to try and win a national championship and is determined to do so next season. We have a lot of unfinished business and I'm not ready to leave here, you know, without bringing home that national title. For many athletes, coaching is a way to stay close to the game they love. Meet three SEC volleyball players who share their coaching experiences. From the court to the sidelines, one former and two current Scottsdale Community College volleyball players enjoy their sport from a different perspective. This is my first year coaching, so like I really didn't know what to expect, but I mean it helps you see the game from a different point of view. Julia Moreno and her teammate Jemima Itamudia help coach a volleyball club called the Arizona Volleyball Club a club they both played on together in high school. 
Jemima says that every time she stands on the sidelines, she's tempted to go out on the court and play. Um, it's been different. The hardest part, I think, would be having to, like, stand and, like, watch instead of, like, sometimes I want to, like, just jump on the court. As a player, Jemima relied on her athletic instincts and just did it. Now, as a coach, she has to understand the thought process and strategy behind the game. For me, I try to teach them like how to understand the game and work with their bodies. Many athletes say that you really don't appreciate the challenges of coaching until you're on the sidelines making the decisions. I think I've le learned to appreciate my coaches, I guess, more because it's really not easy and like you have to be really patient with the girls. Julia has also been able to apply what she has learned coaching to her own game. Being able to reset myself because I've had to explain every Every single skill so many times to the girls so now like I have all the um, mental notes in my head. For those who may not have a long shelf life in their athletic endeavors, coaching provides one way for them to stay in the game. Former SEC player Karen Peoples is one of those athletes who couldn't let go of the game. She has been coaching for 14 years. I love the game and I wanted other girls to learn the love for the game and just to, to see what a neat sport it is. After coaching for so many years, Karen has learned that winning isn't the most important part of the game. Even though, you know, winning is a bonus, to teach the girls the sport correctly and to see them learn the sport is by far better than any win out there. With their coaching experience, Jemima and Julia led the SEC volleyball team to second place at regionals. Finally, from fighting fires to becoming a fighting artichoke, Keith Brower shares his story with us on returning to school and playing basketball. Like many high school students, Keith Brower faced challenges and even questioned his future as a college student. One thing was for certain, however, Brower always knew he wanted to become a firefighter. I knew I wanted to do it. Once my brother did it, I always look up to him, so I knew I wanted to follow in his footsteps. After volunteering as a firefighter for two years in high school, Brower became a member of the Smoky Bear Hot Shots for the government. He was stationed in Riudoso, New Mexico, and spent a lot of time traveling to fight fires all over the country. And you could spend anywhere up to 21 days on a fire, and then uh, plus travel. So there would be times where you're gone for 21 days plus, you know, four days there and back, so uh, you're gone a lot. After three years, Brower decided his career as a hotshot was over and moved to Arizona. He now attends Scottsdale Community College, studying business and finance. He also plays for the basketball team. Having been in the real world for a while, the 24-year-old is now more prepared to handle life as a student athlete. I treat it like a job. It is a job, you know. I'm coming here, I'm going to be making a living, so I have a lot of respect for it. His hot shot training also helped him get ready for his workouts. It's helped me mentally more than anything, uh, dealing with working out here, you know, knowing that I've been through worse. Brower had, in fact, been through worse. We did a lot of outdoor running, uh, you know, miles on miles, hills and stuff. Um, we also did uh, crew hikes. We would go on 10 mile hike, you know, here and there. Uh, me and my Sawyer, we would go on, you know, just us two go suit up, full gear, uh, with four to five pound vest and a chainsaw and go hike pretty much wherever he told me to. Firefighting training included a weightlifting regimen as well. Brower believes that his experience as a hotshot helped him mature. His coaches say his leadership skills set an example for others. And he's the type of guy that, you know, I'll ask him to go run through the brick wall. He's not going to question me. He, he'll go do it. For Brower, taking the time off from school to be a hotshot was the best thing that could have happened to him. It guided him down the right path to reach his future goals. Got my head right, you know, made sure you don't, you don't make the same mistakes as younger, younger kids do, you know, getting in trouble and stuff like that. Keith Brower believes the sky is the limit and his education is just the beginning. That's going to do it for this edition of Inside Maricopa Sports. For dates and times of our show, go to our website at maricopa.edu slash mctv. Check out our Facebook page for news and updates and visit our YouTube channel for all of MCTV's original programming. So for our entire Inside Maricopa sports team, I'm Ashley Neville. We'll see you next time.